today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is America in a man's session? I'm supporting both of us and our daughter. Four years, you've been unemployed. Why couldn't you get a job? We really cannot afford it. You couldn't afford to get a job? If he can't step up... You believe you're cursed. Yeah, I think I'm cursed. His mother-in-law is speaking out. CJ's a loser, a liar, a manipulator. You're not helping by degrading him on a daily basis. Let me stop you there. I don't do that. She's crazy. She's crazy. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'm trying to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Magazine published an article stating that four out of ten or 40 percent of working moms are the primary provider in their family. That means female breadwinners make up almost half of the household's major earners. So what does this trend mean for the future of relationships? Well two of my guests today are working women who say they can't take it anymore. They claim while they're out working hard to provide for their loved ones, the men in their lives contribute next to nothing and are just downright lazy. Chelsea claims her husband TJ just hangs out on the couch, refusing to contribute financially to their family. In fact, in the four years they have been together, TJ has only had three jobs. The longest lasted a few weeks, and as for the other two, well, one lasted two days, and he quit the other one the first day. <laughs> Take a look. I'm beyond frustrated with my husband. When TJ and I met four years ago, he wasn't working, and I was hoping that he would get a job soon. I got laid off when the economy had tanked. Ever since, it's been impossible for me to get a job. We've now been married two years, and TJ still doesn't have a job. Right now, I'm the only one working. I'm supporting both of us and our daughter. TJ says that he's always looking for work. Every day, I apply for 15 to 20 jobs. I submit resumes, but I never hear back. I have checked the history on our computer, and I haven't seen that he's been looking for a job recently. Chelsea needs to understand I'm doing everything I possibly can to find a job. I've helped him fill out applications and even sent out his resume. TJ always has an excuse for why he doesn't have a job. He will tell me no one's hiring, he won't work for minimum wage. We have had car problems. How am I supposed to get to an interview without having transportation? Personally, I may be cursed. I feel very frustrated and angry. At this point, I'm not sure what to think. Do you have anything that's in the works right now? Not at the moment. TJ and I have a 22-month-old daughter. I'm a stay-at-home dad. Daycare is way too expensive. I understand that daycare is expensive, but we could afford it if TJ was working. I feel like maybe TJ just doesn't want to work. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. What Chelsea needs to know and understand is I really want to work. To make matters even worse, I recently got laid off from my job. Now we're both unemployed. Okay, TJ, let me start with you, okay? You say you've applied for how many jobs? About 15 to 20. Well, I thought you said you'd applied for 1,000 jobs. Not a day, 15 to 20. <laughs> no, I didn't say a day. <laughs> Sorry. Total. That you... uh, it's, been, it's been way up there. I mean, because I'm, I'm including the submitting resumes online through different websites and right. through papers. and. You said you've uh, been to like 60 interviews? Yes, I have been. And it's very, right. very competitive where I live. Okay. But you said you were raised very structured. Yes, I was. So you have a very structured day with your daughter, yes, right? Yes, I do. Yes. You pop up, fix her breakfast. Mm -hmm. You say the morning is for education. That is correct. And then the afternoon is for play. You go that to the park correct. every day. You right. We'll do, do, we'll do a different activity. Like we'll go to the mall, walk around, get some exercise, or we'll go to the park. You know, every kid needs to go to the park. You know, there's days that we'll sit at home and watch TV programs. Mm -hmm. It just depends if it's a rainy day or what. Yeah. But you're trying to get a job. I am. I am. You're really trying to get a job. I really am. But since you're not, you're an active stay-at-home dad, half a day on education, half a day on... Right, and this is because we really can't afford anything. There's no <clears throat> opening for me to actually go to an interview. It's like, what am I supposed to do? Take her <clears throat> with me to the interview? Am I supposed to leave her at home by herself? You know, leave her in the car? That's illegal. 
Right. I mean, there's no way out of it. Yeah, you don't want to leave her in the car. And yes, it's the <laughs> truth. Right. <laughs> she has a bachelor's yeah. degree. I don't. It's and hard. you say the reason that she's all on you about this every day right. and creating a lot of pressure and anxiety to you yes. is because her mother is a crazy, evil devil woman. Yeah, I mean, she's crazy. <laughs> she's crazy. And we asked you why you felt like you couldn't get a job, and you said, well, you gave us a list. Well, caring for your daughter full yes. time. As you say, you can't take her and leave her in a car. That is right. Um, <laughs> You never hear back after your background check because you've got a felony conviction. Yes, I do. And it's for? Burger River Building. I broke into a baseball park when I first turned 18. It's two months after my 18th birthday. Got drunk with a few <clears throat> friends. Went over there and broke into the baseball park. Don't ask me why, but we did it. I don't remember doing it. But it just was, got stupid. And I, and I learned my lesson, you know. Your car didn't work for three months. Yeah. <laughs> you can't afford gas to go to the interviews. Yeah, that's right. Others are more qualified. You refuse to work for minimum wage. Maybe if I got minimum wage at 40 hours a week, it'd be a different story. But I can't find one. I've never even had a minimum wage job. I mean, I'm talking about fast food or retail. It's 25 hours. I mean, you're not going to get more than that. You can beg for it. I've done it. I've never got more than that. No good jobs where you live. No. And you believe you're cursed. Uh, yeah, I think I'm cursed. <laughs> On four years, yeah, I think I'm cursed. By the evil devil woman or just... <laughs> <laughs> no, not by her. But just in general, because, say... Just in um, general. Right. You don't think that's what's going on at all. Well, some of it's true. But you say you call home at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. or send him an email or something, and he's still in bed. Right. Where is she? I guess still sleeping. At 10 o'clock. OK. And she's two? Right. She's about to be two. She'll be 23 months? 22, 23 yes. months? And she has a two-word vocabulary? She speaks more than two words. Um, a while back, she was only speaking a few words, but now she's speaking more. She'll say apple. She's trying to say orange. Um, Mama, dad, dad, bye. Your doctor is shocked that she is developmentally delayed? Right, right. She's, that is correct. Oh, yeah. But since we've seen the doctor, she's said a few words since then, but I don't feel like she's up to par where she should be at a two-year-old level. But when you come home, is, is, like, dinner ready, the house clean, laundry done, all, all of that? No. And I feel like after I've been working all day long, I'm tired. And I don't want to come home to a house that's dirty. I don't want to come home and do laundry. And honestly, I shouldn't have to. If the, shoe, if the tables were turned and I was the one at home, I would have given our daughter a bath. Dinner would be cooked and ready. Laundry would be done. Dishes would be done. The house would be vacuumed. And that's just all there is to it. The house would look spotless. And if I'm the one out working, and many people have told me this, the person that's staying at home should clean the house. That is their job. is a two-way street. You may stay at home if that's what you're going to do, but clean the house. Don't make one person work extra hard. And you've been together how long? We've been together about four years. And out of that four years, how much has he been unemployed? Um, 99%. <laughs> I mean, that's a fact, right? It's, yes. I'm not trying to make so that. It is four years, is. you've been unemployed most of four years. Yes. Why weren't you getting a job those two years that you didn't have a daughter? You said, I couldn't leave her in the car. I was having to stay home to take care of her. Daycare costs too much. Those are your lead right. reasons for not getting a job. For two of the four years, you didn't have her. So why couldn't you get a job those two years? Well, <clears throat> it's not really an excuse, but we were having car problems at the time. We couldn't afford much. I mean, it's... This is why you get a job. I know, I know that. But the thing is... We, I couldn't. We really could not afford it. I mean, we we're... You couldn't afford to get a job? No, we couldn't afford the gas to actually go out for me to look for a job. But, and you say and you so don't want a, a, a minimum wage job? Did you graduate high school? No. You are a minimum Did wage you? worker. That's where you start. And then you, you work your way up. You're not going to get a job as a brain surgeon. Right, I know. Chelsea's mother, Karen, the evil devil woman, uh... <laughs> has been listening backstage and says her son-in-law, TJ, not only lacks ambition, but he's also a taker and a liar who has a bizarre way of thinking. Well, we're going to talk to her when we come back. I think TJ is a liar, taker, the manipulator. I think it's disgusting that a man would mooch off their own wife. TJ's a loser, and he needs to go hang out with the losers. And later, he's throwing items at you. Is this your black eye? 
So you're sitting there plucking at my head, and I get the damn shirt, and I swung it, and I caught her with the button, and I didn't swing it lightly. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Our son is handsome, charismatic, and a devil problem child. I'm going to break your bones, son. You stupid, fat, ignorant. Do you think that hurts her? I can't do this. I want to walk off. He's been arrested more than 10 times. They bring him back. Don't you allow him to come back. If we didn't help him... He would be dumpster diving. Would you rather have him diving a dumpster or cutting your wife's throat? That's tomorrow. Chelsea says she's tired of being the breadwinner in her family and is frustrated because her husband, TJ, has a million excuses why he can't make money. She also claims her family hates her husband, especially her mother, Karen. Karen says, well, what's not to hate? Take a look. When I first met TJ, I felt something went sorry for him. I quickly realized that TJ expects people to cater to him. I think TJ is a liar, taker, the manipulator. My mom calls him trash and a freeloader. I feel like Chelsea's mom, Karen, is crazy. TJ doesn't work, he doesn't want to work, and he's not going to work. I think it's disgusting that a man would mooch off their own wife. My mom is frustrated, and I feel like I'm stuck in the middle. My daughter, Chelsea, and I do not have a relationship now because he lies to her, and she believes him. I don't want to be a part of my mom's life because she won't accept my husband, TJ. I feel like my mom has even called Child Protective Services on TJ. One day, a lady showed up at her house and said she was from Child Protective Services. She looked around her house and even examined her daughter. I believe Karen was behind all of this. I wouldn't put it past my mother. She's that evil. I have never called CPS, but I have told them that I would call CPS if I needed to. Yes, come here. My mom doesn't need to continue to bash TJ. She needs to be understanding. TJ's a loser, and he needs to go hang out with the losers. OK, it sounds to me like you're trying to run the boy off. Is that right? After four and a half years, yes, of no working. You run me off the first mm -hmm. three yes. minutes of meeting her. You, you, you didn't think he was a good candidate from day one, minute one? No. Do you see any redeeming qualities in him whatsoever? No. <laughs> Zero. And what's your main objection to him? TJ doesn't, um, when we first came into Chelsea's life, it's not just it wasn't the no working. It was after about a year of not working and telling people that you work, which is a total lie. If you don't work, then you tell people you don't work. I'm sorry, I've never made that uh, You do. No, I don't. I'll say and I don't actually, work. Hey, America, I don't work right now. I don't have to hide it. Actually, I don't this, have to hide okay, it. Okay, well, let me just get a little further with the work. Come on. You went to church, and someone from the church, he was going to help you. They Thank asked you. you a question, how long has it been since you have not worked? And you said, and this was three months ago, and you said it had been three months. Oh, really? So you was there, so you know exactly what I told this group of people. Chelsea? She was I mean, at work. At the end of the day, TJ probably is embarrassed, but, you know, the at reason the why... At the end of the day? Hmm? <laughs> well, totally. You know, but the reason I'm why... I'm sorry, we're... nobody can really say that statement because I was the only person okay, there. First of all, bottom line classroom. is, when you don't provide... And all this is a meeting group that everybody provide, gets that looks through newspapers. When you can't provide for a woman and you knew you couldn't provide Where for the you? woman, you should have never married her Where in the first place. Okay, you set a marriage on a foundation. Okay. 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 You set it on okay. a foundation, and if you're going to use God in it, then it's built on a godly really? foundation. Really, me using God, I don't go around bashing, using scriptures against somebody. Okay, that part of it, we're going to stick to the story of the no child. That is part of the And story. the lying and the manipulation. Okay. Well, if you maybe call, or maybe not. I don't know. What I mean, if it's evil to. for me to continue to be frustrated <clears throat> at you because you don't work, because You've you been lie to people. Since the day I pulled up to paint your house. And we are about to lose everything we have. It's I not, just lost my job. I don't even know and how And that you is why we, we are here. Who is we? Because it's a because marriage. She hasn't brought anything to the table. You were raised in a home where everybody brings something to the table. He brings zero. I, he doesn't have two cents I, to run together. I understand so how can it be we? where you're coming from. Let me tell you something. From. You complain uh, about your daughter not being in your life and your granddaughter, but you won't step up and say, you know what, TJ, you need a job. Let me watch your granddaughter today. You won't, you won't even, uh, even offer that. 
I did. Okay? No, you I... did not. You've never offered that a day in your life. Yeah. You don't give a damn. You'll take three months to talk to your daughter because y'all will fight about something so petty. And I'll tell your TJ. daughter to come to you and talk to you. TJ, but you know what? First I'm done. Of all, I've been let me done say last something. year and a half. I won't First ever, of all, let me say ever, something to you. Ever help y'all again. Okay. You don't I'm done. help me? Dude, y'all didn't talk you before don't I help... met y'all. Well, how do you think that first birthday's going to happen? TJ. Did I not come over to you and say, you need to speak to your mother? That's your mother. <clears throat> she TJ, loves yes. first of all. Okay, uh, first first time, all out, time out. Time out. Mary for that. Unreal. Time out. That's five minutes of my life I can never get back. <laughs> and... You're just all talking at one time and bickering back and forth, and you don't need me here for that. Does anybody have any questions for me? I do. How can we change this situation? You know, I love TJ, and I want him to work at the end of the day. <clears throat> we are never going to have a life. We're never going to get ahead. We're never going to be able to have a home, never going to be able to provide my daughter with a good life if TJ is not working. Mm -hmm. On the flip side... <clears throat> I want my mom to be in our life. I want her to be supportive and be a grandmother and be there for us. So how do we fix TJ's unemployment and then how do we bring peace in the family? Those are my two main questions. We're going to find out if she really wants that or if she really doesn't when we come back. There's a darker side of the story that no one here wants to talk about. Absolutely not. That's why we can't have a relationship, because you lie, and if you say one thing, then you totally twist it. And later, you need to quit lying to yourself. He is being lazy in the way he is nurturing. You need to stop that. You need to take care of your daughter. The fact that TJ isn't working creates a lot of stress in our relationship. Chelsea can push my buttons. TJ gets angry and he starts cursing at times. I feel like TJ says these things because he's under so much stress and he has no other way of coping. TJ is physically abusive. Chelsea has told one of our relatives that he has pushed her against the wall, put his hands around her neck. Once I saw Chelsea with a black eye and I asked her what happened, Chelsea told me that he wanted to sleep late and he hit her in the eye. I've never laid my hands on Chelsea. I would never hit a woman. One time he got so upset with her, he told her he would take your heart out and liver and cut it up and boil it and eat it. I think TJ is very dangerous. He is a ticking time bomb. Karen says That's she raised lie. her college-educated daughter, Chelsea, to be ambitious and self-sufficient. So she is angry that she married TJ, who Karen describes as a lazy moocher. But there is a darker side of the story that no one here wants to talk about. Um, has this gotten to the point where there has been physical abuse? No, absolutely not. There was the shirt incident, but that the was what? it. The shirt incident where he accidentally <clears throat> popped my eye. And everyone in the family knew about that. But as far as physical violence, right there's thoughts? never been any physical violence. Um, and, you know, that's why we can't have a relationship, because you lie. And if you say one thing, then you totally twist it. You know, we are here. I wrote into the show mm -hmm. for my marriage, and because TJ is unemployed. And, like I said, we're about to lose everything we have. So that is the root okay, of the Okay, well, here's problem. the email that you wrote mm -hmm. in to us. I pulled some excerpts out of this. He also has anger problems and has popped me in the face before and thrown things at me, causing bruises. The, the... You wrote that. The only thing that he has ever done was the shirt incident, where he went like this and he popped me in the face. He cusses and yells around our daughter when I have begged him to stop. I think that TJ... Yes, T, TJ, and he'll admit to that. And yes, I, I will. Think that his I'll admit to anything I'm wrong. I will not lie. And, he, okay, he, and now, that was wrong. I okay. Have, I have. Okay, but... He has anger problems and has popped me in the face. Um, now, those are your words in your email. Right. Okay, you didn't say has accidentally popped me in the face. You said he has anger problems and has popped me in the face. And you went on to say he has thrown things at me, causing bruises. So, to me, mm -hmm. I, I read that 
as a domestic violence scenario. He shouldn't have done that, and we've discussed that. And, okay, and you, know, you said, how wrong. can I help you? You said, how can I help you? Well, right. I can give you some advice here. I'm not trying to throw your husband under the bus here. But you have a tendency to start defending him anytime somebody says something critical about him. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, if you want to solve problems, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And if you trivialize or minimize things that are going on, then it's real hard to put them on a priority list. You've had items thrown at you. You don't want to trivialize that. That's not okay. And you don't want to be doing that. Well, it goes back to TJ's anger. And I do believe that has been, you know, the unemployment has caused him. He is stressed. He is anger. You know, he's, he's at his breaking point, I feel like. Right? Don't you feel like you're... Yes, you I don't am. know... I don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. And that's why I wrote in. Something has to change. I, listen, we can talk about why. Right now we're talking about what. The what we're talking about is that he's throwing items at you. And you wound up with a black eye. Karen alleges that TJ gave Chelsea a black eye. And she gave our producers a photo that she claims is proof. Is this your black eye? Mm hmm and This was just accidental. Mm hmm Yeah, he, you know. <clears throat> Tell him the truth. Tell him about you pulling, you not pulling my hair and how I was uncomfortable being at your aunt's house with your parents being there mm -hmm. on a <clears throat> random secret of prize. So you're sitting there plucking at my head, and I get the damn shirt, and I swung it, and I caught it with the butt, and I didn't swing it lightly. Mm hmm I mean, I was, I was irritated. I'm sleeping. I don't want to be messed with, because every time I get around them, it's drama. I mean, it drives me crazy. Every so time, it wasn't no an what. accident. It was, I was, it was like I was in the middle of sleep. It was like I'm sleeping and I'm being messed with and I'm saying stop, stop, stop. And I grabbed the shirt that's right next to me because I had no shirt on when I was laying down in bed and I just swung it. And it just caught well, her. And she said, I'm I told him, you have to and control yourself. Horrible. What if you had accidentally I mean, hit I was our daughter? Tears because, and I that's what I had to lose her because with. I did something stupid. <clears throat> I mean, that was ignorant. I mean, I, I still look at myself low for doing that. I Why mean, are you bothers. throwing things at her? Well, that's the shirt. I mean, I'm not going off and saying, hey, I'm going to hit you with this. Uh, this dish today, and especially why would I want to hit her at her family's house? Everybody's there. I just feel like hitting you at your family's today. I mean, it makes no sense. But yet, you did it. I know, it was stupid. I was, like, still asleep. Why are you not working? I'm depressed. Stay with me. It feels like there's no way out. And later... Middle-class men do the least amount of housework, but they believe they do the most, so they're delusional. <laughs> Why are you not getting a job? First, it was because I couldn't find nothing that I wanted to get paid, and that was ignorant, that was stupid. I wanted a job. There's nothing that made me feel better to support her and my daughter. My mom has no help. My mother's not capable of helping us. She just nags. That destroys me. I'm depressed. I've been wanting a job so bad. It took me, it landed me in the emergency room. I'm a big dude, so I never had anxiety. I had a car from work because I felt like I was on a heart attack. I get to the emergency room. They put an the EKG on me and said my heart rhythms have, uh, they called it, uh, Heart participations, I think it was. Palpitations. Heart palpitations, and mm -hmm. uh, I was having anxiety and panic attack. And they told me to go see a, a, a heart, a heart doctor, what a cardiologist. Okay. Uh, and it's just Are, we couldn't afford them. I mean, it's so much. Just look at me here. Yes. Stay with me here. Why are you not looking for a job? Why I are am you looking now. I am looking. I'm. I'll take anything. It's been like this. I'm not talking about right I'm now. Not, this uh, minute. I'm talking about why. Are you not working? Why are you not out there getting a job? I have not, there's no one to help me right now. I mean, I have my kid. I can't just take her with me. I know it's no excuse, but I really have no family helping me. Like, literally zero. Zap. She has a grandmother. That's it. Her mother's three hours away. Her aunt's six. Everybody's gone. My family's <clears throat> gone. I mean, I have a small family because everybody's passed. I mean, it's just, it feels like there's no way out. 
nothing. That's it's, why I wrote into the show, and then I happened to lose my ended. job in the middle of talking with the producers, and it's I went and just, up. I wouldn't just say, hey, I don't want a job today. Screw it, go to work, lady. It's not like that. I mean, at first, it was because I was hard-headed. I want a job. I made, okay, $25 an hour isn't a lot to a lot of people, but in my area, it was good because I had overtime. So whenever you lose that job and you're only getting jobs for eight, nine dollars an hour, you're like, what the hell? That's like cutting your 30, 66 percent of your check. And at that time, it was just me and her. She was covering her own, and you know, I'm over here, I'm wanting to work. It, it was stupid of me. Look, it was really TJ, ignorant. I, but do you understand yes, the I logic of uh, yes, what I you're do. saying? You're saying yes, it's like a 66 percent cut. It's like a nine dollar raise. I know, I know, from nothing. I know, I know, and it was selfish of me. I know it was. And do you understand? At this point, but everybody makes mess ups. I mean, everybody. But is you not realize perfect. that right now, it's haunting me. Yes, it's I like inertia. Mm -hmm. You know, inertia is a tendency of bodies at rest to stay at rest, and so you're at home, and you're not even doing everything you can do at home. There's home-based businesses you can do. You're not cleaning the house. You're not cooking the meals. You're not doing the laundry, and you can tell yourself whatever you want to tell yourself. But if you've got a little girl that's coming up on two years old that's saying one word at a time and has uh, a vocabulary of five or six, then she is not getting the stimulation that she needs to be getting. She should be asking two-word questions right now. She should be saying two-word sentences. She should be adding words every month. If you're taking her out and you're taking her on walks where you're reinforcing by saying dog, tree, bush, and then she says dog, and you say, yes, dog, good job. You build their vocabulary across time. That's not happening. You're allowing a developmental delay to creep in here, and it's going to be difficult if you let that set in. You need to close that gap right me. now. Right. It should concern you. I want her in daycare. I want her <clears throat> And that tells you that she is in a cognitively impoverished environment throughout the day. And then you are home, you say, well, I'm tired when I'm home. This little girl is in a cognitively impoverished environment. She needs stimulation, and it's not TV. I know. Because it has to be interactive, and she, she has to be teased out on this stuff. It takes effort, it takes energy, and it obviously is not happening. Based on results, it is not happening. You may wish she had married him, but she did. You're not helping by belittling and degrading him on a daily basis. Okay, let me stop you there. I do not <coughs> do that. I don't okay. do that. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Our son is handsome and a devil. He's been arrested more than 10 times. He says he's going to put a bullet in your brain and burn your house to the ground. I can't do this. I want to walk off. That's tomorrow. My daughter is being brainwashed by TJ. Before she met TJ, she was independent. She had everything. Now, since being with TJ, she cannot make any decisions. She has to have TJ's approval for everything. Karen thinks I brainwashed Chelsea. Karen also believes I'm in some type of cult. I think that's just plain crazy. She thinks that TJ is manipulating me and taking advantage of the situation. I feel like he could be involved in some kind of cult. OK, you said. You had a question, how can this situation get back online? Right. Let me start with you, get that out of the way since you're not part of this relationship. You may wish she had married him, but she did. Uh, and whether he stays married or they don't stay married, he's still the father of your granddaughter. And um, you're not helping by belittling and degrading him on a daily basis. Okay, let me stop you there. I do not do that. I don't okay. do that. Okay. I well, don't do that. All right, well, then let me put it this way. You're not helping by belittling and degrading him occasionally, quarterly, semi-annually, whatever the frequency of it is, to your daughter. She knows your opinion, I think, if you just ratchet it down a little bit and let me try to do some things that things might help. You need to quit lying to yourself. 
you have an undivided loyalty to your two-year-old daughter, and you're allowing her to be neglected by him. He is being lazy in the way he is nurturing her cognitively and intellectually, and you're allowing that to happen. You need to stop that. You need to take care of your daughter. And if that means that you can't leave her with him, if that means you need to take her and go somewhere, whatever you need to do, your daughter comes first. She needs a protector here, and that protector is you. And by protect, I mean just from neglect. I, I don't think he would hurt your daughter. Right. I don't believe he's in a cult. I don't believe <laughs> he's... <laughs> you... You're, you're, you're lazy, and I'll tell you why you're lazy. You made some bad decisions early on, and you got in a comfort zone. You got in a habit. You need to be willing to do anything for anybody, anywhere, that's not illegal. Okay? And you need help with your depression, and you need a life coach to get you on your feet and get you moving to work this out. And I am going to provide you help in both of those areas. <laughs> we are going to get you back on your feet. We are going to get you employed. We are going to get you standing tall with a paycheck in your pocket where you can help your family. Okay? And I know the people that can do that. And we're going to take about 100 pounds off of you while we're doing it. We're going to get you in shape physically, mentally, emotionally. We're going to get you employed. We're going to get this depression, which is a reactive depression, not an endogenous depression. And then you're going to be able to stand tall and conduct yourself where you look in the mirror and say, you're doing a good job. How would that feel? To marry or not to marry someone with huge debt. We're going to talk about that next. We'll be right back. Okay. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click Be In The Audience, or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Dear Dr. Phil, I've been dating my boyfriend Justin for two years, but there are a few things that concern me. Justin has accumulated nearly $300,000 of debt with college loans. He graduated and has been trained to be an air traffic controller, but sadly, the Federal Aviation Administration is not hiring at this time, so he is stuck working as a server at a restaurant. We would like to get married, but another one of my concerns is my boyfriend Justin isn't proactive about getting a better paying job, and he is constantly spending what money he does make on upgrading his car and sports equipment. Justin says he wants to pay off his loans, but he says he doesn't know where to start. I feel he has just become lazy and unmotivated, and I fear if we get married, I may get stuck paying off his loans. What advice do you have to help us through this? Sincerely, Emily. And so, Emily, um, what is it you want him to do that he's not doing? Anything. Become proactive in the situation, get a better paying job, because right now serving is just not doing it. Okay, and Justin, you know what she wants you to do, so why are you not doing it? I'm just trying right now to make ends meet, <clears throat> do anything that can pay the bills and help her and me just getting through our daily lives. I wanted to uh, fulfill my dream, and I was kind of waiting for that, and that might not be the smartest option right now. Yeah. Um, she says that you could work 45 minutes closer doing the same thing for more money, um, even if you don't get a job as an air traffic controller, 
that you could, as a server, that you could work closer, more money, so it would save on everything and give you better ability to pay off your debt, et cetera, et cetera. So why are you guys not working through that? Uh, the reason why I haven't worked uh, closer was because I just started this job about five months ago. They were the only place that kind of gave me the opportunity to start working. Mm -hmm. I felt it was too soon to kind of throw them under the bus and just go somewhere else. Yeah. Relationships are about common goals, common values, and being able to get together and see whether or not you have compatibility on those things or whether you don't. So what you need to do is go through some very structured premarital counseling to see whether or not you are way off on what you want and what you're willing to do to get there. But you guys are not even almost ready to even think about getting married. Not even, almost, sorta, kinda, maybe. And I can tell you, this is just a guy thing, and I hate to put words in Justin's mouth, and he can deny this when we hang up here. Um, but my sense is he ain't really ready to get married right now. Because I think he's kind of okay with the way things are going at this point. So I'm guessing this is higher up on your priority list than it is on his. Uh, Justin, do you want to acknowledge that or you just want to recuse yourself and talk about it with her later? I, I would agree with you a little bit there. Don't believe I'd have said that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, really, no, I do appreciate your honesty and candor. And you need to know that, Emily. You guys talk about that. You need to go through some premarital counseling, and if you survive today, then I'm happy to set you up with some very structured premarital counseling that will talk about all the topics you need to go through before you make a decision to put marriage on your radar. Fair enough? Yes. All right, coming up, a woman who says we're in the middle of a man session. And female breadwinners dating underachievers is a new social epidemic. We'll talk to her next. We'll be right back. <laughs> Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Well, my next guest is a renowned comedy writer and an adjunct professor at the University of Southern California. She is also the author of the self-help guide, Get Your Butt Off My Couch and Your Hand Out of My Wallet. <laughs> <laughs> And claims there is a really serious man session happening at epidemic proportions. Please welcome Sonia Warfield. <laughs> well, how are you? <laughs> oh my God! You uh, explain what you mean by man session. Well, Dr. Phil, I mean there's a real epidemic going on. Women are becoming bread earners, breadwinners. And the men aren't just, they're not stepping up, and they're not stepping up at home either. There was actually a new study out that found that middle-class men do the least amount of housework, but they believe they do the most. So they're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a crushing responsibility on women to bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, take care of the kids, take care of the house, and it's just too much. And I think men are becoming too comfortable. I think Kanye West needs to revise the lyrics of his song, Gold Digger, to now include men, okay? Yeah. Because there's a new kind of gold digger in town. Yeah. So, so give me, like, your top three pieces of advice to women that find themselves in that situation. Well, I really think that part of the problem is that we cover things up. We're not telling people that, no, our husband isn't working. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Throw the brakes on there a minute. Okay. So you're saying your advice to women is like if they're at the church social or a dinner party or whatever and they say, what does your husband do? 
They, and he's not, they should say what? Well, they should say, you know what, he's not employed right now. He's looking for work. Do you know of anybody or anything that could possibly help him? Instead of yeah. keeping it a secret. But what if he's not looking for work? Well, if, <laughs> if you want him to be looking for work and he doesn't, and he's not looking for work actively and he should be, then that's the time to, to out him. I mean, it's not to shame him and to embarrass him, but it is to talk about the issue and not cover it up. Yeah. So you should also go on a sex strike. Well, yes, here's the thing, Dr. Phil. If enough, if enough is enough with this man and you're tired of him and you're tired of what he's doing and not doing, why do you even want to have sex with him in the first place? Sonia also lists some warning signs of an underachieving man. You said, one, he has to move in too soon. Yeah, that basically means he's homeless, okay? <laughs> yeah. If he's trying to move in with you right away, and you might think it's cute, and you might think, oh, he loves me. He might not have anywhere else to go, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> He's a dreamer. He's all talk and no action. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. A dreamer who doesn't do anything, his dream you'll end up paying for, and that will become your nightmare. Yeah. Okay, is it... Un you, women tell me, is it uncool if a guy pulls out a coupon? Uh, if it's if it's right away, if you've been dating them for a while, then yeah, I, I understand. But if it's like on the first date and he pulls out a coupon, come on. He tried to use a coupon on our honeymoon. No, I didn't. I remember. No, I didn't. Remember? We, we were we were gooning you on that. I it know, was a, but it I, was, I haven't forgotten. It was, it. You go to a cheap <laughs> casino, they give you a free beef stew dinner. <laughs> And it we were telling her we were going to take her there to get her a free B stew dinner. She thought we were serious. <laughs> no, not that one. I mean, that was a joke. It was He's happy for you to buy your own engagement. Turn her mic off. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's happy for this. you to buy your own engagement ring. Bad sign, right? Yeah, I mean, if you have to buy your own engagement ring, then you're proposing to yourself and marrying yourself. <laughs> Honestly, like, if he can't afford your engagement ring or if he's fine with that, then there's a problem, ladies. Yeah. All right, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Sonia Warfield. Uh, her book, Get, off your, Get Your Butt Off My Couch and Your Hand Out of My Wallet, is now available on Amazon. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much, Sonia. Thank you so much. Good to see you all.